Hi everyone, Jessica Morales joining you now. I'm at the OTC Energy Challenge. You're hearing the clapping behind me. The award ceremony just uh, went underway and the scholarships were given out for the OTC Energy Challenge. I want to give you a little background on that. There are four students per team. These are students from schools in the greater Houston area. About 70 something students participated in this. They were all given a challenge. They're STEM real world challenges created by industry experts. All the students had to put together a poster to illustrate their project and also put together a five minute video. A lot of brain power went into this. I was very impressed talking to the students. I got to visit with a few of the different schools and we're going to share some of that with you. Again, uh, four students per team from Greater Houston area. These were public and private schools involved in this. The industry's challenged right now to get good kids uh, into the programs and, and bring them into oil and gas. We see a gap, so we're going to have some, some concerns down the road as, as people retire and move on. So we think that's a hook that we'll start bringing in more people in terms of uh, that kind of generation that's, that's more uh, technology savvy in, in those tools they have. So I would encourage all of them to continue working hard and think seriously about oil and gas. It's a different oil and gas today. So our specific project was to choose a challenge and the challenge that we chose it is the capture of carbon wrangling which is the capture of CO2, the transportation of it and for us to reuse or store it by using partially depleted oil fields. The solution that we also choose to go with it is carbon dioxide enhanced oil recovery. My main part was mostly research and trying to figure out our benefits, our policies, the basic of what we need for this specific projects and the images as you see here trying to lay them out trying to figure out which is the right images for this particular project we all took part in our four parts here uh, everyone took care of one part and I took care of putting it all together into one single bit I took part in building this model and also helping on the research with, the, um, with everyone I also kind of helped with like kind of bringing the energy to the group, making sure that everyone has that energetic and that, that, that feeling of not feeling like embarrassed or feeling discouraged or feeling too much nervous. I'm giving that energy to the group where it's just like, okay, I'm like the rocket, I'm just going to shoot you guys up to the stars. They've been working in teams of fours with coaches and mentors uh, to solve real world problems that the energy faces today. We're looking at their project, Eco Safety Sustainability Power System. I'm here with the experts, though. I'm not going to try to explain it. We'll start off with Alexandra. Thanks for joining us. Tell us a little bit about your project and the challenge you all were presented with. So our challenge was to create new and additional uses for dikes and dams. And our solution was called the Eco Safety Sustainable Power System. So the first thing that um, we had four different components, which we integrated into our system. And my component was the drones in the app. So there would be a drone that would be flying over the dams and using ground control points, it would monitor the water levels. When the water levels exceeded safe amounts, this information would be input into an app. And this app would alert uh, um, the citizens and the public of perhaps a threat to their safety. So this was to help people. And this was especially influenced by recent events such as Hurricane Harvey. What I specialize in were the cement uh, sensors. So there would be two levels of sensors. One would be an inter internal sensor embedded inside of the cement, which would detect concrete movement and shifting, which could then be um, transmitted to the overseers of the dam. The second would be an electrically conductive coating of paint, which would go, which would, could just be painted along the dam. Part of my challenge was uh, social aspects and everything, so they focus more on the technical side while John and I focus on more of the uh, energy side. So I, I use aquaponics and uh, it's the integration of hydroponics which is a type of farming using uh, no soil and then uh, aquaculture which is like a 78 billion dollar industry and provides 40 percent of the seafood we eat so it'll provide society in the area uh, fish and uh, vegetables and everything as well as store uh, John solar power that will provide society in the local area. I focus mostly on renewable energy. We chose to do solar panels because Houston doesn't have the elevation to have a hydroelectric dam. Um, we base this on South Korea where they recently put uh, solar panels in the reservoir of their dam and they found that they didn't have to clear out an area so there was no environmental harm. It created a habitat for fish which helped prevent algae bloom and the whole system replaced the need for around four billion barrels of oil. 
So it was just highly efficient and it was just a good way to make renewable power. It also is a fun environment in terms of the challenges and things that uh, I think the younger folks are looking at where they can be environmentally sound and still work in oil and gas where a lot of these digital technologies are really looking to change the game. So I see that as a big motivator.